back with another video for Ophelia Talks and in today's video we're not making the thing that I'm holding here that you can see but we are making the thing that's inside the thing <laughs> so I am making for you today a page to go in our envelope and the envelope is next video and today's video we are making a little blanket that looks just like a page. I really, really love the concept of this. So I wanted to make this for Layla's bed, but of course you can make this for another cat bed or for another baby doll bed, but also imagine this as a cushion. Imagine making two of these and sewing them together, putting a cushion in it in. Wouldn't that be lovely for a student? But also look at this. This is for the next video, I know, but I'm so excited. If you made this bigger, put a cushion in, put a stamp on, put a name on, how lovely would that be for a teenager's bed? So there we go, lots of ideas. But first of all, in this video, I would like to show you how I've made this page here. So for this project, you will need white for the basic page. I've used sherbet for the writing lines. I used pomegranate for the margin. All these are Starcraft Special DK. Then, of course, I used my three and a half because that's what I always use for this yarn. It is prescribed as a four, but depends on your tension. As usual, scissors and a darning needle to sew in your ends. But I'm also using some stitch markers and I am using this <laughs> as the width for my margin, but more about that later on. But it's handy to have something like this. So let's get started. I am going to make this, as I said, for Layla's bed. So I'm making a slip knot, inserting my hook, and I'm going to chain 80. Now, of course, if you're making this for anything else, for a cushion, for a big bed, single bed, whatever you are making, measure what your width is, then chain to that measurement. And of course, then it doesn't matter how many you've got because we're just making basically a white blanket. OK, so make your white base and then we'll take it from there. So I'm just going to chain some chains for you here because obviously I have made my blanket. But I want to show you how I am going to achieve making very, very straight edges. And if I just chain a small amount, I'll be able to show you quite a few lines and you'll see how straight they can be. So imagine these are my 80 chains. Now I'm going to take a look at my chain like this. And you can see this is the last chain. Now I'm going to chain one for my turning chain. This turning chain is made every row, but we do not count it. You do not use it. It is just for you to sort of go up a bit, if you understand what I mean. Now I'm going to do half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over and into not that chain that we just did, but into the last chain of our count, you're going to go in and do your first stitch. Pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the three loops on your hook. So in fact, you're doing your first stitch in the stitch where your chain is coming out of as well. I have just made that stitch and I've created a V here just underneath my hook. That is where I'm going to place my stitch marker because that is the exact location that I'm going to use as my last stitch when I come back. The V underneath that is the actual chain that we're just disregarding. So now we are going to do a half double crochet because I made this the basic page in half double crochets all along the chain. So a half double crochet is yarn over insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the three loops on your hook. And I'm just going to continue like that to the end of my row. 
just doing my last half double crochet here and that's the end of my row now I'm going to do that chain one you turn half double crochet in that same last V that that chain is coming out of now I've created a V on top of here and that one is going to be my last stitch when I come back and in the beginning it might be handy if you put stitch markers in after a while you will start recognizing it and once again you do your line of half double crochets all along the row picking up the V's as you go along okay so I've made it to the end of my row well nearly so I can see there's a V here so I'm going to be using that there we go then if I didn't have that stitch marker there I might have missed that last V but that last V sort of if you tip your work towards you, looking at the other side, you will find that that last V is sort of leaning towards the other side. So you can't sort of see it like this. You almost can't see it from the top, but you can see it from the back there. I always call this the front. I don't know why, because <laughs> this is the back towards me. I don't know. So it's very helpful in the beginning, certainly, to have that stitch marker there. But once you know that that little V is hiding on the other side, hoping not to be used, <laughs> you know where to go and find it. OK, so make sure you do go and find it. Then chain one, you turn. And once again, same thing. You yarn over into that very first stitch and you do your little half double crochet. And this, in fact, is the location for our next last stitch when we get there. So move your stitch marker up and make sure you don't forget to use it. Once you know where that little V is to be found, you don't have to worry about the stitch markers anymore, but make sure that you lay your work down quite regularly checking the edges making sure that you have found that little stitch on the side okay and I don't know whether you can tell but here this part is a really straight edge so it will grow and the edge will be really really straight so I did um, the length of Layla's bed and I just measured it in uh, centimeters how long I needed it to be. So if you're making this as a cushion, get your inner first and work to the dimensions of that. I have just about finished doing the actual page and it's about, let me just show you, it's about sort of 49 centimeters tall, which is, you know, sort of the, the length of Layla's bed. So that's good that I have that. And it's about 50 centimeters wide, so it hangs down on both sides. But of course, if you are doing this as a cushion cover, make sure it's the size of your cushion, okay? Best to get a rectangular one. So I haven't um, cut off my yarn just yet because i am going to do the look at that i'm going to do the lines to write on and of course you sort of have to space them out all over the blanket but i was thinking you know how far do i space them out what's the right amount for sort of the size of page that you're making um, and so I thought I would just try out a couple of distances you know just so I just did this one I quite like it so I might just continue that one and then of course if it doesn't work out here I'll either take off a row or add a row or whatever so that's why I haven't cut this off yet <laughs> as you can see with our um, new trick you can see that it's really straight. I mean, I can't believe how straight this is. Um, so now I would like to show you how to do the uh, lines, the writing lines. And for that, I am going to be using Sherbert. So one, two, three, four, and then above the line. So one, two, three, four, and then above the line. So here, I think 
is where I'm going to place my next line. Yeah. And of course, you can obviously, um, you know, put stitch markers first, work it all out. Um, you know, see how you're going to space them out. But that's not me, is it? <laughs> I'll just go in head first. So put your hook in, bring up the yarn from behind and you've got your loop. Then hold on to the short bit underneath the, I always want to say blanket, but I really should be saying page. <laughs> hold the sherbet like you normally do it. Then go in between the two next stitches. Go and sort of wind the yarn around your hook so it stays behind the hook and just bring it up. Of course, now our first one has gotten a lot bigger, but that's okay. Just pull it through and just tighten this first one and hold on to it with this with these fingers here while you make a few more stitches. So hold on to your yarn underneath in between the next two stitches here. Do do a little thing. Yeah, and it comes up. See, you get used to doing it without actually seeing what you're doing. So you go in and you sort of do this loop round. You pick up the yarn behind the hook and there it is. So is this the distance? I'm not sure. I think I'm too high. Yeah, see, it's good to check. Check first of all, you know, after you've done a couple of stitches, making sure that that is where I'm supposed to be. No, I'm supposed to be a little bit lower here. See, you know, trying to explain things is all very well, but I do do things wrong then as well. So yarn it round, loop it round, bring it up. There we go. And then do the next one. But it's good for me to also show you, you know, do a quick check. Always, always do a quick check. Whatever you've done. I mean, I check throughout projects all the time. So there we go. That's better. That's about the same distance, isn't it? Let me just measure it. because. I... <laughs> oh, Anya. Okay. So that's about just about three centimetres. Yeah, three centimetres. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to continue doing this, obviously, all along to the end of the row. And then just... Do another one and another one all over the page. So as you keep on working, make sure that your yarn is free flowing so you don't bring in the blanket and your stitches are nice and loose. So you don't lose those nice straight edges on the side. OK, and also just continue doing this to the end of the row. And so in the ends, and of course, you know, space out all your writing lines and do this all over the blanket. I will see you when you're ready to do your margin. So I have finished all my writing lines. That was fun. <laughs> and now it's time for the margin. So I'm using pomegranate and <clears throat> while before um with the slip stitches here it was quite easy to keep straight because we were doing them horizontally now it's not going to be so easy to keep straight for our margin because you sort of you know it's easy to sort of start deviating here so to help you to make sure that you stay straight on the side i thought maybe putting a ruler there and just <laughs> going alongside that or maybe um, using a thinner thread and just sewing it in along the ruler and then as you do your slip stitches just pull it at the end and then you know sort of keep on going straight like that I don't know um, you could also just gauge it every five stitches and make sure that you're still straight so any way of keeping straight here is fine. Try and, you know, find a way that would be, you know, sort of good for you, that would work for you. If you have any bright ideas or any tips about that, do leave me a comment um, below so 
you can share it with everybody else and with me, of course, as well. So I've got my um, yarn ready again. Same thing. We're just going to go in. And yeah, so here, just below here, just past my ruler, there's a hole. So I'm going to start using that. So go in to your starting point, loop the yarn around and bring it through. Go in just above that, loop it round and bring it through and do your slip stitch. And try to make small stitches because that helps to keep straight. And now I'm just going to do three and see where I'm at. So does that look straight? <laughs> <laughs> Have I already deviated from the path? Um, no, that looks okay. See, so I'm going to try and keep my ruler like this and then just sort of visualize a couple and then see, you know, where I should end up. So it's only the one line that we're doing here so you know do it carefully see here i had to yeah that's okay do it carefully take your time and stay straight so good luck <laughs> have fun and i will see you when yours is finished And I am nearly there. It did take me a while because I <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> kept on going a little bit skew if, but I'm I'm happy with it. See here I was using the ruler, which which sort of helped, and then here I did it without just to see. And I think this is more wriggly than here. So, you know, having a little bit of a um aid to keep you straight does help. But like I said, it's just the one line. So I'm thinking, yeah, I got through it. I managed to keep it reasonably straight and I am happy with the way it looks right now. So I'm going to cut off my arm and I'll have to sew in the ends. So I'm going to do that in a moment and then I will show you. Oh my goodness, I love the way it looks. I hope you will try this project. I really, really love it. And don't forget, in the next video, we are going to be making the envelope to go with it. So make sure you are there for that as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.